Arabella arranged the lemon bars neatly on the plate, wiping a bit of powdered sugar off the delicately painted roses with the tip of a finger. She sucked away the sweetness, humming as she carried the offering back into the living room and set it on the table beside the tea service. It's so nice of you to bring me a treat, dear, the old woman said. Arabella took the vacant seat across from Mildred Covington and smoothed her skirt down over her knees. The chair was overstuffed, a bit lumpy, and smelled of Mildred's five cats, but was comfortable enough. I remembered how much you loved them, Arabella said. Always have, and yours are especially good. I remember when you first brought them over, when I moved in. The old woman smiled at Arabella and lifted her cup of tea in trembling, arthritic hands. Goodness, that was after my Norse died back in O2. Moved here to Fox Hollow to be closer to my daughter Agnes, you know. She works down at the Save-A-Lot on Madison. Arabella nodded. That's where I get all my meat. Outside the window, snow fell heavily, blanketing the town in white. Arabella pulled a quilt, the twin to the one tucked around Mildred, across her lap for warmth. Agnes is a sweetheart, but I wish she would come visit more. Would you like some more tea? The lines around Mildred's mouth deepened as she sipped from her cup. Arabella's own smooth lips pursed in a contemplative smile. No, thank you. I'm fine. Mildred smiled, her dentures bright white compared to her tan skin. You're such a treasure. A lovely young woman like you taking the time to visit with an old woman. She motioned to Arabella with gnarled fingers, as if indicating her whole person. Her blue eyes grew misty. <laughs> it's nothing, really. Arabella smoothed a pale hand over her shiny dark hair, tucking an errant lock behind one small ear. It's good to spend time with neighbors, don't you think? So pretty, Mildred said as if she hadn't heard. Why, your eyes are just the color of the emerald earrings Norris got me for our fiftieth wedding anniversary. I've never seen anything else so bright, and with your hair and skin, just like Snow White in the fairy tales. A pretty pink flush crept up Arabella's cheeks. Any mention of her looks elicited the same response. She was still shy about it. It was one of the things the town folks loved about her. One of the reasons she'd won Miss Fox Hollow five years running. Many people said she was the most beautiful girl in town. Remember when you met Norris? He sure was a one for jokes. Arabella offered her the plate of lemon bars. Mildred shook her head slowly, her eyes fluttering. She leaned deeper into the wingback chair. Beside them, the fire crackled and popped, filling the room with the scent of tea and wood smoke. Wrapped in the quilt, Mildred looked small and skeletal her white hair a dandelion puff above her wrinkled face, but her smile grew wide. Well, now, that must have been back in 1929. We were kids together. He put a mouse in my shoe. Arabella listened as Mildred recounted meeting the young Norris and how they'd eloped to Niagara Falls after high school. She nodded as Mildred's words grew slower and slower. Finally, she stopped mid-sentence. She blinked at Arabella. It's so... Nice of you to come over, she said again. I, I wonder why you never visited before. Arabella sipped her tea. It wasn't your time, Mildred. Yes, Mildred said, and closed her eyes. Arabella sat and waited until Mildred's body went lax. She caught the cup and saucer before it could tumble from Mildred's lifeless hands. Once she set them aside, she tucked the quilt closer around the frail body. With a sigh, Arabella gathered up the tea things and strolled back into the kitchen. She hummed as she washed up, testing the blade of the knife against her thumb. It left a faint line and she smiled. It would do. No one used scythes anymore. She returned to the living room with one of the cats twining around her ankles. A silver mist had just begun to gather on the old woman's lined lips. Arabella caught it in her cupped hands waiting as it filled them. When a cloud of mist roughly the size of a cantaloupe rested on her palm, she lifted the knife she'd used to cut the lemon bars and severed the last lingering tether to the old woman. The ball of mist pulsed brightly in her palm. After several silent moments, it dissipated. Out in the cold, Arabella drew her long black coat closer around her. Snowflakes lit her ebony hair. The rest of the town lay quiet beneath the snow, waiting for the storm to end but Arabella had work to do.